What's up, everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com. Uh, so, check it out. Um, I'm rebuilding the hot end for my 3D printer. So, first of all, why am I doing this? Um, I was trying to print nylon, and nylon seems to swell up when you get it hot, and uh, just had some issues, and so I just decided to redo it. The other problem was this guy. I kept having this thing uh, give me problems. This is not rated for the amount of current that I'm putting through it. And you can see right there, it decided to uh, burn out. And I've had lots of problems with this. I originally took this hot end apart and rebuilt it once um, because I thought I had a bad connection, but it was actually this problem right there. So I'm going to get some RC connectors, which are higher amperage. Now, um, Jeff, uh, my buddy Jeff, hi Jeff, he actually originally built this hot end. And um, it consists of this little guy, the actual hot end part with a 0.5 millimeter hole. This little guy, which is a quarter 20, 20, quarter 20 brass thing. I don't know if he made this part. I think he may have, but this could have been a regular thread and sand it down. I don't know. Um, and then this is peak. P-E-E-K plastic. Now, I was going to rebuild this part and start from scratch, uh, but this peak plastic is fairly expensive, actually. It's not super cheap. And um, I drilled this out. It originally had an insert that he put in there to make it for the smaller diameter filament, um, which I was grateful for. So, what I'm going to be doing, um, here's the original wire. This is like nickel chromium wire, I believe. Um, and it's a heating element. And half of the uh, half of the padding stuff is kind of like falling off of it, so i got to be real careful with it. I was going to use a different resistor, but I decided not to. I decided to keep this. I'm going to try to use it because I want it to be confined over the tube. Um... So that worked pretty good for a long time. Actually, worked great. Um, and so now I'm going to redo it a little bit because I want to put this smaller hot end on here. This is a, uh, a 0.35 where I was using a 0.5. And uh, basically, I want to be able to do finer controlled prints and try something a little different. So this is... Um, the real problem, too, is this is quarter 20 thread and this is M6 metric, M61. So I got some stainless bolts. I was going to use stainless. And then I found this tube at the local store, which this tube is actually... Uh, let's see. This tube is this guy. There you go. And, um, and this has a hole in it with about the right size diameter that I'm looking for. It's a little bigger. It's about 2.4 millimeters. And I'd rather be a little oversized instead of being undersized in case stuff gets stuck. Now, my, my original thought here is that this will be the insert because I don't know how well I can draw a hole in either aluminum or stainless. I figured if I can put this in there as an insert, it'll be perfectly smooth because it's extruded. Um, so it's seamless. So that's my idea for using this brass insert. Now, I'm going to be using aluminum, and I'm going to attempt to make this thing um, fully metal, except for this part because I'm using this peak as a mounting. And this goes in here. And this is what holds the hot end in place. So, um, I don't know yet. I might do all aluminum and just make this little insert and be okay with that. Or I might use this insert. So that's the little intro. And I'll show you some videos as I make this guy. This is just aluminum stock. And, uh, yep, I'm going to use a mini lathe here and see what we can turn out of it. Alright, so that's the intro. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Cutting, 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 threading, cutting, trying to cut and just didn't seem to work so grab the hacksaw not a good idea don't do that but that's all i had at the time then uh drilled it out drilled some more drilled some more stuff machine the back a little bit and drilled it out moved on to the uh insert brass insert yep cut the brass insert got it in there uh had a little tight fit but sanded it and got it in Okie dokie. This is just a little interruption in my machining. I wanted to show you what I had here. So here is Jeff's original wire. Um, it is smaller than the stuff I'm going to use currently. Um, I don't know what gauge this is, but it's probably like 30-something. Um, or 30. I believe what I got here. Well, it's uh, 0.32 millimeter. So this is a uh, Catnall D, and this is uh, exactly designed for this purpose. But it's not coated. Um, you can see this wire that Jeff originally had is actually coated in a very fine piece of uh, fiberglass of some kind. You can see it's missing in spots. That was my, one of my original problems. So I decided I wanted to go with something slightly heavier because I had it. So I have this that I purchased, uh, I don't know, six months ago, um, and I have it in stock, so I want to use it. So this is um, 5.9 ohms per foot. Um, so I currently have a piece right here, which uh, I've just been testing the amount of current that's being pulled through this. So it's about 2.5 amps. This guy's about 1.6. This guy's about 2.5 amps, which should get me a little bit more wattage and heat up things a little bit faster. That's the goal behind uh, doing it this way. Now, as far as insulation, um, I'm probably going to end up using Kapton tape and wrapping this wire in that with one layer. And then um, I have here some stove gasket cement. Um, I, this is old, old stuff, but it withstands 2,000 degrees or over 1,000 degrees C. So that's some good stuff. Um, so I'm going to end up probably using this with some heat sink compound, similar to what I did here. And um, I don't know, I've got a bunch of different ideas. I'll let you know what I come up with. But this is the section of wire, and this is what it is. All right, so one more thing really quickly. I wanted to show you what I'm starting with. This is actually a plasma cutter, and it's what swirls the hot gases, cold gases to hot gases inside the plasma cutter. And uh, this is a used one. And I'm probably going to cut this up, put a slot in it, and then use this as my channels to wrap my uh, heating wire element. And I'm going to make it just big enough to fit right between that cavity. That's the plan, Stan. No idea if it's going to work.
Oh yeah, so there it is. That is the complete unit. And I went ahead and uh, put it on there, test fit it. I just wanted to see how it would work out. It seemed to work pretty good. And uh, now I gotta do some more work. So let's see what that looks like. Yep, so just uh, this little thing, I'm crimping wires, crimping little ends on the wires. These are little uh, tubes that are designed for pins, but uh, they're almost like brass. It didn't really work out very well. And then here, you can see that I took a hacksaw and cut an angle into that little piece so I can put my wire in there. Oh, uh, so, Kapton tape and a piece of heating element wire. Just trying to see if it would even hold, and you can see it did a pretty good job, but uh, finally gave up. So, I did it again, and this time I uh, wrapped it tighter. And you can see the uh, Kapton tape, believe it or not, on that hot wire, did not melt. Uh, if I turned the lights off, you could see that it was glowing red hot. So, quite impressive, Kapton tape did a really good job here. Uh-huh, so just to prove that it didn't burn, check it out. It did not burn through that tape. That's pretty impressive. That Kapton tape's pretty good stuff. Okay, so after that, I uh, got the heating element all put together. And then I uh, basically tried melting the plastic. And I tried, and I tried, and I tried more power, and I tried different plastics, and I tried all sorts of stuff. And it seems like it would melt for a short time and then just quit and I just didn't understand what the problem was. So, I actually took the uh, end and machined it down so that I could uh, fit it inside a new heating element. I thought my heating element was not hot enough. Uh, so I built a whole new end and tried to make a whole new thing just to make the heating element actually work. All right, boys and girls, I'm gonna show you what I did. This is what I made. <clears throat> Started out with a pipe fitting, which is the threads on this guy, and uh, and made this. This is a, a wrench spot, so it fits a wrench. I've got two set screws in there in case I need them. And then the uh, the thermistor here will actually fit in this hole, but the wires are gonna come out the backside right there. See, there's a hole all the way through there. And then I'm gonna put a very small uh, set screw inside here. I just the only thing I got right now is a screw, but that's a 440, and that just holds this guy inside here. So that's how that works. All right, now I'm going to try to wrap the wire around this guy. But first, I've got this squiggly piece of wire, and I wanted to show you what I do to uh, get it straight. So, because this stuff is uh, resistive wire, um, I'm going to put this on here. I'm basically just going to uh, Oops. clip this guy on here. Oh, burn it off! Did you see that? Son of a gun, okay. So we know that's too short. Okay, I'm going to clip uh, this guy on this side, and this guy over here. Not close enough. A little closer. See if I get red orange, you can just pull it straight. Now it's straight. Anyway, that's how I'm straightening this wire because I'm going to be taping it, so now you can see how nice and straight it is. Alright, so I was originally going to try and tell you everything I did here, but I'm just going to do it briefly because I didn't give much detail. So I didn't show how I built the original hot end, uh, or not the original one, but the first version in this video. But basically I took Kapton tape and I wrapped it around a wire, uh, just one folded over once. And then I took um, this material that I found that I used to use for when I did my um, gasket on my stove. Uh, you used gasket stove sealer and it's really high temperature stuff so I used the tap Kapton tape as insulation and the um the actual adhesive stuff that's supposed to be for the um the um braided fiberglass on your oven I used that 
to actually um, just kind of keep everything in place because that stuff hardens once it dries. It gets really brittle, but it also hardens. So that's kind of what I was doing in this entire video here. All right, so I'm just testing it here. Just wanted to see uh, how it worked and it seemed to work fine. Full power, that is. Okay, true story. I grabbed my wife's blow dryer and uh, she told me just don't ruin it. And I, I want to use a blow dryer because I didn't have the fan to, you know, pretend like I was blowing air through it like I designed it. And uh, quite frankly, that was a bad idea. Check out what happened. Yeah, so uh, I used some uh, polypropylene hose and I taped off the front of the blow dryer and I put it on cool, but something malfunctioned. It did not stay on cool, so it was blowing hot air in there and it got so hot it melted the tubing. <laughs> Luckily, I pulled it out of there, no big deal. Lesson learned. So after all that work, it still didn't work. Back to the drawing board. I decided to start from scratch, build a new one. All right, so what you just saw there was I took an M6 bolt and uh, cut it down because that's, a, that's the type that my nozzle was, was an M6. So I machined it, put a tube in it, then put a brass tube in it. And you can see I'm testing it here and I still couldn't get it to go through. The brass tubing, just everything just bunched up in that brass tubing. So next I took a bunch of uh, stainless steel uh, shims that I got out of hard drives and um, brass washers and tried to make basically a heat sink with uh, stainless. Um, and they're really super thin just to try to get as much heat as I could out of this thing in one spot. And uh, that proved itself to be a failure as well. Oh man, well I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna see if I can get these little bitty... These are off the top of hard drives, I believe they're stainless. They're non-magnetic and they look shiny like stainless. And if... Uh, also I took washers that were number 14, brass, and I actually tapped them so I could thread all these in there and make them stay tight. So if I can get this guy to cool everything to this iron, or I mean uh, brass pipe, if I can keep it cool enough to where it doesn't get clogged here, I'll be happy. I'm gonna have to run some air over this to get it to cool. But uh, one of the ideas I had is run air in here in this chamber that'll be closed off, run air back out of this and into here. Um, or just directly into both and try to cool everything. Because that guy in there is, is hollow for now. Okay, test this on the printer tomorrow um, and let it do the PID controlling, see what we come up with. Oh, well, there it is. This is my new hot end. It weighs less than the old one. This by itself is as heavy as the whole hot end. Big brass piece. I didn't know any better. I got aluminum this time. So I got air ducting going in and just blowing air around that screw and across the heating element and onto the actual print, which is kind of what I want to do. Then I got my heating element, my new one I made, and uh, the new hot end, or the new tip. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be putting these guys on this pipe, but right now the JB Weld is setting up, so I don't want to move it. I got, uh, I got these new uh, RC connectors. You can see the big ones right there, the round ones. Those guys are going to be my new connections. Because the, my cheapo fan connector idea actually melted. It gave me some problems over the time, but it worked. So that's it. It's got a new uh, a liner. It's actually got a piece of, uh, piece of this, which is my standard Bowden, Bowden tube. It's a P-T-F-E. P-E-F-T. I don't know. I'm so tired. It's really late. It's been up for too many hours. So tomorrow I'm going to install this guy. 
And that's it, it should work. Oh, what's up everybody? So it's the end of this video. Um, I actually recorded and edited that video that you just watched, or the beginning of this video, I should say, approximately a month ago, maybe even longer. Uh, and I needed to record a little snippet here showing you the final results of how, uh, how it's looking. And uh, I'm running this slightly faster than normal, but it's working out well, so it's all good. And um, it's packed in the corner right now. Moved all my stuff over here. So, um, as you can see, it is running. And it looks good. It's running pretty fast. But, uh, yeah, so, generically, the hot end that I constructed seems to work really well. Uh, actually, it works extremely well, considering, uh, the simplicity, simplicity of it. Uh, I was, you know, trying to make something very complicated and not really overthinking it, but trying to, trying to definitely make it more complex than it needs to be. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, you can actually reverse the, uh, the wheel here and pull the filament out even when it's only at like 150 degrees C. It still pulls out nicely and uh, doesn't get stuck and you can push it back in with no problem. So that was one of my original issues was because the inside diameter was bigger than the tube going in, getting stuff back out, switching out plastics, it was just a bit more of a pain. But, uh, but that's okay. Nothing wrong with that, it's just that uh, this version seems to be working quite well. So I thought I'd give you that final update. And uh, that's about it on the hot end. It's working well. So peace and love you guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And uh, leave a comment, share, like, all those fun jazzy things if you, uh, if you wish to do so. Alright, peace out. God bless you guys. Later.